Um, I'm just so stoked to be with you, man. What's up? What's going on? Yeah, man. What's Nothing happening? Much. Um, just getting up, having yeah. some coffee. By the way, I've always appreciated. Uh, I I just recently learned about your show, and yeah. Um, so I started watching a little bit, and so hard, uh, sorry to hear that. I like your I like your vibes, and I like the marijuana positive stance yes. that you have on your show. Um, I appreciate that. I like that you have a weed counter that says yeah. weed time. It's just it's a countdown. Gives people a little time to 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 fill their bowls and 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 you know get on my level. Uh, I, I, I've got a tremendous uh, uh, ocean of anxiety just beneath the surface right here, and uh, the weed helps me keep it at bay. Um, and uh, and my bay. bong, my bong Excelsior right here, uh, helps me get through the day. Uh, uh, hi, I ever, uh, what, what does Excelsior mean? Like ever higher or something? <laughs> it's, it's some some righteous thing. I'm pretty sure. Right. Um, I don't know. Did you want to smoke with me? Is it, it was? Can can I yeah, invite you? Fuck yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's smoke it up. Oh my god. All right. Well, I I have a lot of uh, half smoked joints that I'm just. Oh yeah, get the ends, baby. I know I know what that's like. Um, I used to have that, uh, except I ran out of weed and then I smoked all my ends away. <laughs> oh, and and yeah. I'm like See, fucking I'm, in desperation zone over here, right? Um, let me hit I'm the button. From the bottom of the barrel. You got to yeah. do what you got to do. I've been there. All right, where's this going to show up? That's fucking huge. That is absolutely big. Folks, you got two minutes. Load up. Load your bowls. Uh, and I'm going to I'm gonna see if I can roll a joint in that in that time period here. The two minutes really pushes my, my speed. Uh, but uh, I think I've got this down. Yeah. I've got the technique. I think, I think you can do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of practice. Fuck yeah. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, so, uh, sorry to, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go on. Go on. No, uh, happy to be on your show and, um, yeah. you know, talk about shit that's yeah. interesting and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, I got you. I, uh, I, um, I feel like we have a lot in common. Okay. Um, you know, to do like politically or just yeah, politically. The, the weed, the weed and the politics and you're a musician. I'm, politics, I do music really. too. Do you know, do you know I did music? See? I don't. I don't think I knew that. I, I, uh, yeah, I do a bunch of Johnny. I, I like to sing songs. I like to sing the f ever living fuck out of a song. You got a nice baritone. I feel Thank like you. it would work. I used to be in a works, Johnny Cash yeah. tribute act. Yeah, I could see yeah. that. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. A little slapback vocal yeah. for you. Yeah, Ooh, Sam Phillips. Sam Phillips. Nice. Very happy. Um, yo, really stoked to be with. I think you're like. Maybe first musician that have been that have been joined by. Uh, let's go ahead and reel back and circle back and, and give people some some introduction here. Oh, I'm down to thirty seconds. You caught me monologuing. Oh, so, uh, Rathbone, you're a musician. You describe yourself as a anarchist musician. Uh, you, we've been loving your music over here on this channel for fucking months and months. I've just been getting more and more into it. It just it just hits like nothing else. I I, I don't even know what to compare it to. We're gonna talk about that. Um, you just seem to like exist in your own fucking universe and it's awesome and just desperately needed, you know? Smoke weed every day. I appreciate that. Smoke weed every day. And, uh, Smoke weed we, every day. Exactly. We're going to talk a lot about, uh, about your music and stuff. Why don't you go ahead and, uh, and tell folks what you do, uh, and, and, uh, you know, where, where you, uh, where they can find you doing those things. Yeah. I mean, I'm all online these days, uh, as, as everybody, I guess, but, um, yeah. You know, uh, I've been a musician hey for some time. I, I started out playing piano, um, mostly. Uh, I live in New Orleans. Um, okay. I played jazz music for years as a oh. cocktail pianist. Oh, you got chops, yeah. then. Um, you could uh, probably play anything, huh? You got an ear. Yeah, I got. A, I guess I, I guess you could say I got an ear. Um, and... Let's see. So I, I, you know, and then I, I've just, I've, I love music. You know, I've, I've just anything about it. I've always wanted to learn about. So, uh, you trained, or you just picked piano. it up? You, 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 you picked up the piano, or you, you were taking lessons? Were you trained? What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I okay. think, I think, you know, I discovered it like at a young age when I was like nine. I was like, oh, I, I mean, I just thought the piano was the coolest thing in the world. And, uh, yeah. so I wanted to know as much as I could about it. And so I started learning and taking lessons and, um, I initially really loved classical music. I know as white as that sounds, 
but uh <laughs> i got a choral i got a choral education degree by the way yeah yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, is, is as mayonnaise as it gets yeah right um and then you know studied it and i really i tried to be a really good sight reader you know yeah and but i'm not the best it's but hard. i did uh you know i i, I learned well enough to you know, be able to read it. It just took, it just takes me a while, but, um, yeah. it's, but it's then, a, definitely a skill set for sure. Yeah. But then, you know, and then I learn about some of my favorite musicians, my, some of my favorite musicians and they, you know, yeah. they can't even read music, you know? So it's like, okay, maybe I'm taking this too seriously. Yeah. Um, but nice. But, um, so, and then I started playing with others, with other singers, just like being a, an accompanist. And, um, I don't know. I've always wanted to uh, write. I've always had that creative urge to write my own music. And for some time, I just wrote instrumental music for a while. I would write songs here and there. Um, but I guess as it as I got older, I just uh, wanted to write more songs and. Uh, I've just been focusing mainly on songs and just trying to, you know, that's the mode of expression these days. Um, and so I'm taking my stab at it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But um, okay. yeah, I have a lot of experiences in, 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 you know, background in music and uh, I feel comfortable calling myself a musician first. I'm not, you know, I'm not really anything else besides that, but I am interested in a lot of things and namely one of those things recently being politics. So Mm -hmm. Um, so I started writing about that and, um, you know, just given the state of the world and everything, it just seemed like it was important and interesting to write about. So I, uh, started doing that. And then I feel like, you know, for the first time people are, uh, listening to my music because before I was writing, you know, writing sad love songs and, uh, you know, that's a, it's a lonely road. But uh, I don't know. But um, yeah, yeah. I used to I used to play some Johnny Cat. I I, huh? I love doing like folk sets. Uh, yeah, a lot of places. Yeah. So like after I, you know, I I kind of became disenchanted with just playing in like hotels and stuff. I always yeah. felt like in the back of my mind I wanted to be in some seedy dive bar singing my own songs. Or yeah. Something. So I was really. Um, you know, I, 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 I felt like I felt like I needed to change direction. So um, then I started to just play my own stuff, you know, stop hiding behind other singers. And, you know, I felt like nobody really could, you, nobody can really speak for you, you know. No. So um, I don't know. So that so then I started. Uh, yeah. So I started playing a lot of covers, a lot of folk music, Johnny Cash being one of them. Um, and, you know, tried to. You know, and as you do, you you learn, you progress, you grow, you experience, and yeah. and so now I feel like I'm at the point where I don't, and I felt this way for for some time, but I don't really need to ask any more questions about, you know, I'm not really influenced by any music that I hear anymore. I don't think uh, it's more just more output. You know, I feel like you have years where your input, I mean, you're taking yeah. in things, and then there's years where you just okay, I don't need to ask any more questions. And I feel like I guess I'm at that point where, you know, I can do it all relatively quick. And, and uh, you know, I've combined with that with, like, all the production experience I have, um, you know, because just learning how to record your own music, everything, you have to do everything yourself these yeah. days, I feel like. Yeah. You know, just like you. I mean, you're running your own show, uh, hosting your own show. No, we got a crew. You're the cameraman. You're the we got a crew. We got a, we got a, whole, we got a voiceover oh, got a guy. Crew. Uh, someone, uh, hold on, they, they'll announce my show from time to time. This is the I, Dan Simpson show. We got to keep them on retainer. That's the moody. Um, uh, and, and when, when, whenever someone gives me biddies, like 200 biddies or, or some subby, uh, puts Brian to work. They put Brian, Brian's in the closet over there. You and anytime, Brian in the anytime I hit the wrong sound effect, it wasn't me. It was Brian. <laughs> He's your scapegoat. Exactly. That's good. Um, That's you cool. I didn't realize. So, I mean, for the rest of us plebs, <laughs> basically, plebs. you know, we have to do things for ourselves. But Fair. you, obviously, you know, you have a crew and all that. So, 
just uh, with great power. You know what I mean? Comes um, <laughs> great power. If, they, if that's what they say. Rathbone, you I mentioned think that's, how it, that's why that's how it goes. You, what's your favorite Johnny Cash song that you that you like to play or that you played? Ooh, um, well, I mean, to be honest, uh, you know, you do the fucking normal one, like Folsom Prison Blues, yeah. and then uh, I had a couple others. I mean, I haven't I haven't sang, I haven't done like literally. Uh, I live in New Orleans. There was a Hurricane Ida that happened like yeah. before that's like shut down the city. And I just haven't been gigging since really. But I used to go and I used to have a weekly spot in the quarter and I would just go and play like for a couple hours. Just me solo, just playing, uh, playing covers, playing my own songs, playing uh, Johnny Cash and, and Bob Dylan and, um, you know, all kinds of different bands and stuff. And yeah. um, but I'm evading your question, but it's oh, uh, I like Belshazzar. Do you know that one? No. Belshazzar. I'll have to. This could he, be a new one for me to talks. learn. Yeah, and uh, he. It's like he takes a biblical uh, story, and of uh, the, the story of Belshazzar, and it's basically the how man is corrupted with great power. With great power. Kind okay. of tying into what you were just saying. So you better watch out because you might end up as the subject of this song. If you're not careful, Dan, this <laughs> might be you in a few years. This is saying. literally not but ringing a bell. Okay, go on. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I, I, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm putting that Belshazzar, one in there because yeah. I really like that song and it's not like Folsom. I don't, I don't, what, what are some of your favorites? Because if you name yeah. some songs, I'll probably. Oh, for sure. I mean, you got that Walk the Line. You got the hits. You got Walk the Line, Ring of walk Fire, yeah, right. a Folsom Prison Blues. And then you get, you get, you, you, uh, 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 real big tune. People love uh, 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 the fucking uh, Boy Named Sue. People love Boy Named oh, Sue. Yeah. Written by Shel Silverstein. You'll, you'll, you, you might not know that. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it's fantastic. He also wrote like a follow up, The Father of a Boy Named Sue, from his perspective. It's very, very funny. It's just hilarious. Um, you know, people love to hear those uh, uh, fucking, uh, what's the one? Ding, ding, ding. Uh, uh, fucking uh ding, 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 ding. they all go like that ding 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 uh, that didn't help me at all uh, i was trying to think of uh um yippee i oh yippee -I oh, uh ghost riders in the sky ghost riders in this guy if you uh mishear the uh, mishear the lyrics like i did um but uh what i love singing more of uh, some some just the tunes that are very Johnny Cash, but people don't know of. Like, I, I didn't know of these songs even before. You know, I would do, like, three sets of Johnny Cash. We did a tribute act, dude. It was fucking ridiculous. Um, one of my favorite tunes I like to sing is called um, uh, Flesh and Blood. It's just a beautiful little chill song. Beautiful song. Um, and yeah, another song that he sings political uh, is political. It's called What is Truth. Fantastic song. Yeah. Um, okay. He, he's... he's uh, he's i don't know if i would call him a comrade even though i have a funny emote uh, comrade cash he was definitely no com he probably hated him but uh um i, th I think i, th I think we, i think you know if, if we still had johnny cash i think we could fix him we could we could we could pull him yeah, left yeah. you know we could do it kind of seems like a john wayne you know yeah I, I could see where you're saying like an artist but yet maybe has some unsavory views yeah probably everything maybe um, John Different Cash. generation. I guess we'll forgive him if if that's yeah. the case. We'll forgive him. That's uh, all right. <laughs> Wait, I mean, so I, you yeah. were in a you used to do uh like it's like a barbershop sort of quartet thing with Johnny like you would do choral renditions of Johnny Cash songs? Okay, so I will, I'll I'll give you the timeline. I, I studied just like choral music education when I was in college, so I thought it would be like a high school choir director. Um, I would actually do some like uh, acapella stuff, not so much barbershop, more like medieval stuff, um, uh, mm -hmm. Renaissance. -y. And then uh, uh, and then later down the road, actually, I did I did sing in like a, an acapella group on Navy Pier. That was my summer gig one year. It was really interesting. Uh, it's a terrible place. You don't want to go there. Uh, uh, never Where, go to Navy Pier. I'm sorry. Was that on the? the uh, you said Na Navy Pier. Where is that? So Navy Pier is like this tourist trap. Literally, it's a pier. It used to be used during World War II by like the Navy or some shit, uh, and it's just now a big tourist trap. It's trash. We have uh, the world. I live right next to the World War II Museum um, oh. in New Orleans, and uh, yeah, they have uh, the Victory Bells. They do the same. I guess it's an okay. all female thing, but it's. Uh, uh, Quartet, I guess. I don't know. 
but they yeah. do, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I guess that's World War II era stuff, but like uh, the Bugle Boy and bullshit like that. We were literally dressed up as, as like sailors and, and we did like an old time. And I don't know. It was really weird. The, the, the sketch that we did, it was a weird summer gig, but down the road, I would do Johnny cash. It was a full tribute act. We had the whole band. Uh, we had a, a, a June Carter as well. That would come out. It was actually her band and she was not good, but it was good experience for me. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, um yeah. The, uh, little background on me. Wait, what's that? I was, I was just said, yeah, a little background on me. Yeah, um, I you said you you studied choral music yeah. in college. I it's funny because I actually taught choral music in in a high school and uh, get out. I have no background singing. I had no business <laughs> trying to teach somebody teach kids against yeah. their will yeah. to sing, you know, how to sing choral music. And uh, I was so. <laughs> Bad. So finally, I just gave up, and I was like, "We're just gonna do pop songs." Like, what do you guys want to sing? Yeah. And then it worked. It worked way better. But um, incredible. Yeah, I uh, I was in over incredible. my head, but oh, same. Uh, yeah. When I ended up trying to teach, I was way in over my head. But uh, sorry. Oh yeah. Well, um, I mean, I feel like if you had that, if you had that background, if you knew, you know, you probably have vocal, obviously vocal training. You know, you know how to like. You know how the voice works? Like, I didn't know any of that. Yeah. And uh, it was hard to, like, I couldn't do it myself. So how am I going to teach somebody how to do uh, it, you know? Yeah, and I can't yeah. explain it. But uh, that's, that's, you know. Um, that's really interesting because, you know, you, you you clearly have, I think you got a vocal style. And uh, maybe we can pull up a song of yours or, or whatever if you want to think of something. We were, we were playing some of your songs before. You clearly got your own little vocal style. And it just so, it just, like, it just works. It works. Like, everything works. Everything about your music and the videos it's just like this cohesive thing, and it totally works. And I don't know anyone uh, who to compare yourself, who, who to compare you, uh, you with. You, you, like I said, yeah. like you sort of exist in your own thing. And I guess maybe that makes sense. But like the whole input, and now you're just ready to dump. You're just you're just putting it yeah. out there in the world, and it's just like pure, and it's just you, and it's just Rathbone. Oh, I had a question, and then we'll talk about your influences. Someone, uh, uh, one question for you: Do you do you have a yeah. name for your? for your for your fans i call them i call my fans the only dance right do you have a name for your fans um i don't because i don't rap even boners. know if i have any. rap <laughs> boners i knew Just that's where that, you were going dan put that in there i knew it all right I knew it. All right, it's in the list. That's good. You don't have to keep the it, boner. but just it's in the list. Yeah. Ooh, Rathbonians. It's in the list. All right, chat. Let's actually. This is the best part about chat. You get to like literally get a little. They're like your their hive mind. Let's think, chat. Rathboners, Rathbonians, uh, just motherfuckers. It just that's nice. <laughs> motherfuckers, those yeah. motherfuckers. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, but um, I I think you got some fans. I think you definitely got some fans. I, I I think like I said I feel like it's uh it's 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 crazy to me that um I'm making music and it's resonating with people or, or you know I'm getting feedback where you know like you're saying uh and, why is, and why are you the only person doing this fucking shit why are you, like why why is this blowing my mind that like you're the only one like coming out fucking hard against like uh fucking imperialism and uh capital like you it's not like you know, there's no fuzzy metaphors. You just, you've just come out fucking hard. You know? Yeah, I, I, uh, I appreciate you saying that. I, I do focus on like blunt lyrics. You know, like just it being no minced words. Just uh, this is what's you know because like this is what they're fucking doing. You know, so I'm gonna put it in my song. And if you know, if America and you know, if if the government can spend billions of dollars on the PR industry focusing on their fucking propaganda, I should be able to make a song about, you know, have my own little propaganda station happening, you know? <laughs> I feel like. So You're preaching to uh, the choir. Oh, there's another choir thing. Yeah. Um Say. for sure. Sorry to interrupt. I keep uh, doing this. I'm just very excited to be here, you know? <laughs> well, no, I think it's just a little bit of the lag as well. Um, so I hope your I listeners see. aren't uh put off by that but um yeah no i appreciate that i don't know i mean i feel like political writing you know that's not something new there's always been politics in music i feel like um 
I don't know. Yeah. Um, hey but I, I felt like I couldn't write about another love song. Like, do we, does the world really need another love song? I don't know. Uh, or maybe I'm just bad at writing them. Um, but uh, I guess, and then I also think like every song's a love song when you boil it down. Ooh. But, and all art is propaganda. Ah. These are my theories. Uh, it's all it's all manipulative i'm I, I, you know every songwriter is trying to get you to feel something in a yeah. manipulative kind of way but you hope that it would be manipulated in a good way like you're manipulated for higher things you know you're elevated by it instead of i don't know yeah other things just sometimes it just it just feels like you just left off where you started you know you're not enlightened you're not brought anywhere you're not moved uh like your music yeah. moves me. Like, I think I literally watched one of your songs, and I, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm a kind of guy that doesn't mind uh, having a couple tears. I literally cried listening to your fucking song, dude. Like, it's like it hits, man. Yeah, I appreciate that, and I'm sorry. And uh, you asshole, thank you, yeah. But also, I embarrass yeah, me. On I'd my be own lying show. to you, dude. I look, <laughs> real talk. I mean, I'll be lying to you if I didn't think about things while I'm writing and. It makes me really sad. Like the shit that I'm talking about, I feel like is really sad. So it makes yeah. me, it makes me tear up. You know, I'm getting sad about it. And uh, should we get the tissue? I'll have my assistant get some tissues. Brian. Yeah, Brian. <laughs> Give me roll the bring in the tissues, please. Um. Uh. No, it's just you know, especially when you think about fucking what the what the billionaire class are doing, and they, uh just this special species of people that are just like the fucking worst mm. and what they're doing to this world. And they think that they're benefiting. Like we're, they're just like the saviors of humanity, which is the part that really irritates me. And it makes me really upset. But, um, yeah, I've been just learning about that whole grift, if you will. Sure. And it's, uh, it's upsetting. And so, it makes me sad, and you know, and I I just heard about uh, the new IPCC report uh, was released, and it was like, you know, that's the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, yeah, and uh, they just released a new report. It's like you know, panel of scientists, and they release um, reports like, you know, I don't know if it's on a yearly basis or if it's by you know every two years or whatever, but it's recent. And uh, they just updated their uh, report saying, like, we're basically screwed. Like, oh. you know, we're, we're not adapting quick enough. And it's basically, and I haven't I haven't read it, but I, I did read the previous one. And basically what they're saying is that it's worse than the previous prediction. But oh, uh, I, will, I will actually read it. But w from what I've understand, the way that it's been related to me is that there's no escaping two degrees Celsius, uh, you know, the, the rise in, in the Earth's temperature. So, yeah. like, we are headed for uh, disorganized human life. And, uh, you know, and, and I just I, I can't help but think of where we are now and, and, and in the context of what's going to happen. And so it just makes me really upset at yeah. the people that have these have this power. They could change things. Uh, they're choosing not to do that because, of course, then it wouldn't. Like, what's their incentive? They're they're gonna give up power. Why would they want to do that? Why would you know? they do They've that? Life. Yeah, you know. And um, it's, it's thirty six hundred pages, I, by the way. I don't think you want to read the whole thing. No, 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 no. no <laughs> I wouldn't read the whole thing. But there, I think they at the top they. Somewhere yeah. near the beginning, they have something to say. There's there's a thirty seven uh, page for policymakers. How about that? Oh wow! Oh, that, yeah. There you go. That's there you go. That's more doable. Yeah. I think I think but, it's a little you know, more bite sized. Yeah, there are things that we could do right now. Well, what are you doing, could... Rathbone? Why don't you take the lead? All right. You're right. I'm going to start a carbon tax on all fossil fuel companies right now. Starting a. <laughs> the... <laughs> there you go. My tax. Wait, I did you... it. So you don't you don't take the. the... You don't take the into the individualist response to the to the climate disaster, the incoming climate disaster. Yeah, no, I don't buy that narrative. You're not taking shorter showers, I'm patting not, yourself I'm on the back. Saying, yeah, no, I, I, when you, I, did you see like, I mean, I see all kinds of shit, but like, 
the with the Super Bowl me I don't know this is just one example like all the private jets leaving the Super Bowl yeah and like all the you know like that's a good one I don't know just or, or like you know the fact that a hundred corporations account for like most of the pollution and our and you know the rise in the in global temperatures but yeah I mean I'm not saying that on an individual level you shouldn't like be mindful and try to recycle there's no infrastructure I mean at least in in, in the city that I live. Like even the shit that you put in the green recycle mm-hmm. box doesn't get doesn't go to recycling. It's that, like that, uh, when I found that out, I was so sad. I was like, "What the no fuck in- are we doing? Come yeah, on!" No <laughs> it's 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 harder to do the right thing. That yeah. it's not incentivized, yeah. and the you know. So it's not on an individual basis. These are the great evil of today. The great, you know, it's multinational corporations in this economy. That are, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's that's the you know in 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 medieval times that would have been the the feudal lords or whatever, but like the dominant uh, systems of the dominant system of hierarchy is uh, is is in corporations that, that you know, and it goes back to the nature of capitalism and. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm getting all I'm getting up on my soapbox and Do, no, it. yeah, you're allowed to monologue. This is a monologue. Um, a uh, 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 good, the good. What am I trying to say? This is a monologuing space. A space for monologuing. Yeah. Um, did you have anything? For... Did you have anything to add there? Um. Just, want to cut uh, you off. Yeah. No, just I was just talking about multinational corporations and you know how they're globalized. They've already globalized and uh, they're superhuman. They don't. They're no. There's no accountability for them. They have uh, all the rights of humans, of superhumans. They're people they no too. Responsibilities. Yeah. Yeah. They're literally people. It's uh. Um. Anyway. Yeah. So. so uh, that okay. really Angers me. Go ahead. For sure. Yeah, it angers me too, and I think it comes through the fucking music, and I, I think that's what's moving me. Like, you're moved. It pour, it pours out in the music, and we're moved. Uh, and I, I think that's why yeah. I like it so much. Also, it sounds good. Like you're just a good musician. It's fucking catchy as fuck. Um, yeah. you, you've like, you've gotten all that shit seemed to uh, like nailed down. And I definitely want to talk to you about the videos, but sure. I want to ask Rathbone, like you, like we said, you call yourself uh, anarchist musician. How does, how, how did you reach uh, uh, that, uh, that title? Uh, what does that mean to you? What were maybe some things yeah. that led up to that? Um, I would say, uh, I've only come to this conclusion or this political awakening within like the past year. I mean, it's, uh, Dang. so yeah, uh, I, I've only started calling myself an anarchist with like for like a year. Okay. So it's not, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I like I say, I, I would preface this by saying I'm just a musician and, you know, I'm also a human being and I'm concerned about things but uh i feel comfortable calling myself a musician but that being said the things that i've learned you know i think the pan the pandemic was a an eye-opening thing in many ways an eye-opening experience on how the world is run and how the world works and um i think i've just become more it's taken more and more of the foreground for me like these are immediate concerns and so uh now i'm really deeply interested and whenever i get interested in something i tend to to as a musician i tend to have that as my outlet uh, for what i want to talk about i guess so that's kind of where i'm at but um yeah i i would i would say that uh it's not like i gave i, I would say that I'm, I'm i was always an anarchist i feel like everybody is an anarchist if if you can understand it uh with how i define it uh well i'm not, I'm not saying like i'm defi- but this is how it is yeah. explained to me yeah. and how i understand it and it's really just quite simple in that Ill- illegitimate power should be dismantled. Uh, we should be skeptical of power structures. And uh, if, you know, the onus of a power structure, the onus is on them to legitimize themselves. It's not for us to, to question them and, and we have to prove they're legit. They have to prove theirs to, our, to us. And... Um, when you, you know, if you look at history and if you look at most of the power 
where the where power lies, it's usually illegitimate. It's like it it's it's it should yeah. be assumed that the power is illegitimate as a starting point. Yeah. And anarchism to me is a trend in human history. It you know I I ever since I've started writing music and calling myself an anarchist and speaking out, like I feel like I people have I've caught some backlash from people on the left who like have uh uh you know they don't have a high view of of what anarchy is um and so i don't know i would it just causes me to like double down on my beliefs and my convictions and my principles cuz that's where it all lies like i um think of anarchism as a trend okay. and you know they're you know like abolishing slavery is like an anarchistic action it's 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 dismantling a power structure yeah. that was in place in society so that would be you know the the civil rights movement yeah these are w's um, for anarchism I'm, i get you okay go on yeah yeah so um the civil rights movement i, I didn't so, mean to cut you off i was just uh, uh yeah 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 context, no, no, but just like the the the, ba the basis for me is like that's where it all begins for me is is anarchy and 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 i feel like uh in this society that's such a dirty word that's a that's you you can't say those words that, that means chaos that means uh yeah. violence murder all these it doesn't mean any of that and it's just that's you know how much i have to question how much have i been you know yeah. propagandized about yeah. all this stuff like the same thing with socialism and communism mm -hmm. you know Karl marx you know like it's like all this shit is uh denounced in the west mm -hmm. and um you know, we're, we've been heavily propagandized. And so I'm like, you know, it's more to like just unlearning a bunch of shit. Oh my gosh. You know, then, then it is learn, you know, I have to, I've instilled all these capitalistic values and, and like, I've always, you know, found them repugnant. I've always sort of like in, I felt dirty inside, mm -hmm. like, you know, trying to instill these values inside. It was like, I had, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like it's, anti it's an, it's an antithesis of, human nature to not care for others uh to only care about your individual consumption and that it's more for me and less for you and um you know we so it a lot of that shit is covered up but deep down i feel like anarchy uh holds us to the highest standard of like humans you know it's mm -hmm. like it's taking it's like we believe in human rights we believe that people should be able to govern themselves and and uh, communities should be able to govern themselves. Like uh, people should be in control. It shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be in the hands of private power. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be the hands of the of uh, a small few people that make the decisions for everyone else. And who bear who bears the brunt of these decisions? You know, like who is the climate crisis going to affect first? Mm -hmm. It's going to affect all the impoverished communities globally mm -hmm. because they don't have the infrastructure to deal with it. All the billionaires are going to get on their yacht and go to their second home in the mountains or, you know, or not, not in the mountains, obviously, because they're on a yacht. But you know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna, the water will be higher by then. Yeah. The water will be up to the mountains. I get it. I like the analogy. I'm, I'm with you. We're with yeah. you. Yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Brian? Brian, get to work. <laughs> um, um, Oh, I had a thing, uh, but I do also do this thing yeah. where I, I, I just, I just listen, and then I forget what I was gonna say. Yeah, I'm a good listener. That's good. To, I'm good. I, I'm turn good that into that. A, a compliment uh, for myself. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so to answer your question, you're asking me why I'm an anarchist. Sure. Uh, okay, yeah. That's basic. That's basically why. I mean, it just has everything in it that uh, it's a starting point for me. That doesn't mean that um, I don't, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of overlap in these words. There's, you know, I could call myself a socialist. I would feel comfortable calling myself a socialist. I would feel call, uh, comfortable calling myself a Marxist. Um, yeah. You know, I'm just now actually starting to read the Communist Manifesto. I couldn't get, um, it was too dry for me. It was just like boring. But yeah, you, you're, you're, you're reading it. It's definitely like written in the 19th century. That's like, the thing. I can't get like, past that. A specter yeah. haunts Europe, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, but okay. <laughs> All right, Mark's a little dramatic. Yeah, okay? the specter and so poetic. Okay, Just so give me the 
Yeah. Maybe rap on you can it. you can hold my hand through uh, and uh, maybe my chat as well. Uh, I'm not uh, terribly familiar with with anarchism. I, I think I, yeah. as I reach into my head, I I, I pull out anarchism means. It doesn't mean no rulers. It just means no. Excuse me. It doesn't mean no rules. It means no rulers. And uh, you know, uh, I, I would come to also learn, uh, you know, about looking at power structures that are illegitimate. And I don't know. Maybe who held my hand through that? Maybe it was a Graber thing. He's an anarchist, right? Um, uh, and so. Is that is is that that's sort of the idea? Illegitimate structures of power. It's not uh, 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 our job to prove them illegitimate. It's their job to always prove themselves to be legitimate or to be abolished. Get fucking wrecked. Take the L, bro. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, they can't it, take know, the it, L. It, that's the fucking it, thing about like. Like the military industrial complex, the fucking prison industrial complex, cops, they can't take the fucking L. That's their problem. If we can boil that down in, in uh, I don't know, millennial terms or whatever. Well, I mean, they're, they're holding on to power. It's, yeah. you know, they, they have the power. They're going to keep the who wants to give up power. It's not a conspiracy to think that these people, you know, are making decisions behind closed doors and that affect that that benefit themselves you know yeah um and you see that in government and you know how it's tied to corporations and we live in a plutocracy i mean it's a it's a global plutocracy in my opinion it's, there's you know there's the the elite ruling class globally yeah. and then there's the rest of the population and um that's that's really shitty um Rathbone, really, really shitty. I, for one, I oppose the ruling class, and I'm for the the rest of the people for the working class. What about you? I would 100% get behind. Oh, that so, okay, I think we could be friends. Yeah, no, okay. I mean, I'm I'm all for I'm pro working class. That was getting, close. Oh, oh yeah. shit! No. We almost we we no, had no. to call in Brian for a second. Brian he was gonna have. To yeah, he was going to have to mediate us because we were about to get into it. I was but, sure uh, you were going to get that right. Um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to hold your feet to the fire there for a second. Yeah. Incredible. No, of course, of course, of course. Like we, uh, yeah. I, I mean, like that's why I, I, I say anarcho syndical. I call myself an anarcho syndicalist. Okay. Um, which is a, yeah. I guess a denomination of anarch anarchism. There's all these little subsets, yeah. you know. Can, can, it's very it's, vast. It's and I can you re I, I feel like the, I've heard of this and I may have looked into this before, but I've got this in one ear out the other kind of thing. Can you uh, hold our hand yeah. through that? What does that mean to you? Anarcho syndicalism. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's just that it's based in anarchy, which is all the things that I've just talked about. Yeah. But it's 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 more of a um, grouped with uh, the idea that there should be worker councils there it's more focused on the labor movement oh. and the working class and the fact that you know the pro syndicate you know it's like we should be able to create syndicates and and worker councils that where workers should be able to control but that's like a socialist idea you know that's a con it's a, I, here's the thing is like yeah. you have anarcho communism i'll be honest with you you have anarcho you have people Oops. that call themselves anarcho communists and you have people that call themselves anarcho-syndicalists, and hmm. like, I don't see the much of a difference between the two. I mean, if somebody can explain it to me, it's like can... the difference between communism and socialism. Here's an interesting fact. Sure. Like, not to get off too, but just talking about words in general. Sure. Like, socialism. Yeah. As I understand it, the tradition of socialism like where you start with socialism is that workers should control production or workers should control the means of production. Um, I think so you would love reading managed. Lenin. I think you'd love, love reading Lenin. Worker owned. I've heard of, I've heard about state this. and revolution. I, I actually get state and revolution. I've heard people tell me I should read him as well. I'm starting with Marx first. Yes. Um, I, I, I couldn't read much I'm Marx. Get... I, I have I have like a uh, actually I did I did read Marx's Capital, but the illustrated version <laughs> with the pictures with yeah. the pictures. 
Um, and actually, the pictures weren't even very helpful. But uh, it's just a, it's just about getting the concepts on a, on a floor level, and then and then I guess going on from there. I mean, but yes, yeah, it, it, but I mean, you're, it, but where you're going down this this like this road you're talking about, like uh, um, like socialism, and I guess how do we get there, and the, the steps, and workers in socialism doing the dictatorship of the proletariat, which sounds a little scary. But uh, better than the alternative dictatorship that we got, you know what I mean? Uh, and then, of course, they say it, the state withers away, and there's different ways of putting that. But okay, that's the the grand yeah, idea. Yeah, I uh, I would uh, say that I think I would push back on that because I would say that I'm not sure. This is where I'm at right now, but I'm not sure if the dictatorship, any sort of dictatorship, yeah, is necessarily a good thing. I would say though that capitalism is like, for me, is like the absolute worst. Right. And I'd be willing to try fucking anything. Yeah. You know, anything to get us more left. Yo. But I, I, I am hesitant to just go ahead and okay. call myself a Leninist or, or yeah. to equate equate communism with state authoritarianism. But what I was saying was, on, this yeah. is the interesting part of socialism, is that. It used to mean workers are in control. How it kind of when people use the word socialism now, they it's mainly pejoratively, and it or 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 not or not, but it mainly it, it what it means to us now is that the government comes in and uses resources to uh, allocate yeah. to society. So it's more government intervention, but it's like that's kind of different from what. The tradition of socialism has has meant in the past, which is that the workers should be in control. But it, you know, socialism now is like government more in control. So, you know, and I feel like you could go to other words, and they've all kind of flipped meaning. Like what was considered classical liberalism is like the complete opposite now. Or or conservative used to mean like what what we would call. I don't know. It's just really confusing is what I'm trying to say. It's cool. And yeah, it is also it's like convoluted as fuck, man. Yeah. And, and also just like, uh, the word communism as well, um, is it's like, what is communism? Uh, you know, it's, it's a political theory. What, what was it in practice? Like did, you know, was the Soviet union communist was Maoist China actually communist? Um, all good questions. So I don't know. It, it's it's yeah. I, I don't know. Some people <laughs> are diehard Soviet Union fans. Yeah. And uh, like just you like take no, it that it. was it. We need to repeat that. Uh, so. Yeah. No, I I could take it or leave it. Sometimes. Um, okay. Yeah. I will say I'm really identifying with. I feel like where you are in your journey. I yeah. was asking these questions like no more than like a year or two ago. And I've just yeah. had the opportunity to literally sit down and spend my entire fucking day, like looking into these things and asking and answering those kinds of questions. Um, and I just, I really, I, I, I feel like the, uh, a lot of what you just said, I could, I could uh, uh, wax poetic for, for uh, 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 dozens of minutes, you know, to, to uh, share with me what I've learned. Um, but um, yeah, I, 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 that's not what that's not what I want to do today. Although I, I don't know what do I want to <laughs> how do I want to how do I want to reply to that? I just want to say like socialism, like yeah. If you consider the dictatorship of the proletariat, what do we have right now? We have the dictatorship of of the the fucking uh, uh, the bourgeoisie. They they mm -hmm. hold because of the whole private ownership of property, uh, which is one thing that communism wants to get rid of. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, because of that, it sets up this whole domino effect where, whereby the, we have these different classes. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, th through my dialectical understanding of, of history, which just means I just see things through like a, a class lens, um, 
you know, you'd want to, like, if you could just snap your fingers and get rid of the state and have us all working in worker co-ops, whatever, yada, yada, in perfect uh, right. harmony, we you know, also get That's... rid of borders. Like, we, there's no, like, Thanos snap thing, right? So, like, the whole the whole no. Marxist-Leninist thing I, I th- is my ba- very, very, very basic understanding is that they're like, here's how we would go about doing this in places like the United States where the capitalists grip the state so fucking tightly. We got to first, yeah. uh, and there's lots of different thing, people, the things that people say. Uh, you'll, you'll get people like uh, uh, um, uh, Richard Wolf, Big Dick Richard Wolf, uh, uh, communism, that guy. He'll say, like, we yeah. need to start doing worker co-ops because that will start to undermine the capitalist's grip on the state. Will that uh, pull open the, the curtains and reveal the socialism button that we can hit? No, but we need to start working in that direction. And it's sort of like it's sort of like that. How do we dismantle the strongest capitalist system in the fucking history of the world? And we're yeah. currently staring at the worst form that it could probably take in the form of neoliberalism. Um, yeah. So, like, Absolutely. we have cool things happening in places like Chile uh, where, uh, you know, they had the first Marxist... Uh, uh, elected leader yeah. Salvador Allende, and then the fucking CIA helped Pinochet coup the coup the fuck out of him. They were fucking bombing the presidential palace, and he, uh, as he's like sending out his like final f- farewell, um, th- and they just do this shit all Wait, over when, the world. Yes, y- yeah. Pinochet was uh, when was that? Seventy two. Was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you bring up some really excellent yeah. points, and I'm not saying that yeah. anarchy is like, you know, that's the, I'm the, super, I think the complaint against people. Yeah, I'm but, so sorry. I, I'm interrupting. I, I, I just want to say no, that okay. I'm very, uh, like, uh, I'm very sympathetic to anarchism. Uh, I, I think that mm-hmm. that like informs me as 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 a Marxist Leninist as well, uh, specifically about mm-hmm. uh, that. So I'm not. I, I don't. I'm, I don't want you to think I'm pushing back on anarchy. Uh, just, just to be very no, clear, but, uh, but please continue. But yeah. you, you, br- you brought up a good point, which is that like I wasn't, uh, I'm not suggesting that we can just abolish the state. I don't it, think that's a strategy. Right. That's okay. not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, like I going back to like anarchy being a trend, like okay. dismantling yeah. the power structure. Any any way that we can dismantle the current power structures and move in that direction to me is like, and I'm I'm going along with that. Cool. And uh, that's I feel like it's it's that's how it's done. You know, that's how change happens. Uh, we push and push until you can't push no more. And then we we uh, we get the guillotines out, man. We get the pitchforks. Yeah. That's awesome. Guillotines. And we start going to town, baby. <laughs> I really love it. Right. I, I, I do. And I'm, I'm happy that we get to have this conversation. I'm like hoping we get to do it again and like in, in a year, see where you are on your journey and where I am, too, because that's cool. I'm I'm very much <clears throat> I'm very much in this place where I'm just like learning a lot. Uh, uh, U.S. imperialism is a fucking hell of a drug, and it's just uh, everyone's fucking high off their asses on it right now. And it's super weird to be in the middle of it, and 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 you know, like my, my like friends and loved ones that are not you know here in this leftist space. I'm like, how the yeah. fuck do I explain this to you? Um, oh yeah. Well, I don't want to it's, keep you too long, and I, I promise you wouldn't yeah. go over uh, longer than an hour. Can I ask That's... about your uh, about your music a little bit more? And Please. you know, I want to talk about how much I like it because number one, you got the videos, and the video number one, the music's really good, fucking catchy as fuck, love it. Number two, you do you have these really good videos. They're like thank you. Um, I. I, I I, I honestly thought like you, you had like a whole team working on that, and uh, I think uh, I think uh, it was told to me that you you do most of the work on that yourself. Yeah, it's just it's just me in a room uh, by myself and a cat mainly, and uh, <laughs> I would say yeah, I'm. I mean, thank you for liking the videos. I feel like that's, that's awesome. probably my weakest point. Uh, my weakest skill set is like video production, because. Uh, it just seems like I could do so much more. Like there's really great videos and people that can that just do that and they're excellent yeah. at it. And I'm just trying to you know, work my way through it. And it's uh, but I, I've had to. It's been a struggle to get to the point where I can actually edit a video, you know, and <laughs> feel like it, uh, you know, because I've embar- I have embarrassed myself plenty of times. What do you mean? Dumb stuff. Well, just like, you know, when you're trying to start out to do something, yeah. you're not 
good at it and maybe you're making something and it's crap, but you're still going to put it out there. And, uh, but no, for you to say that you like you enjoying the videos, I mean, that's like a, that's a, that's cool because it's, t it's taken me a lot of effort to be able to do both. I yeah. guess is what I'm trying to say. You, I think it's really cool. It's, um, I, I just think they're super unique. Yeah, I don't see anything else like it. And uh, you do a really good job of pulling in, you know, you, you just, it just ties into your content uh, and, and your music and, and like the lyrics and what you're talking about. You're able to pull in lots of different things that, that help to illustrate uh, what you're singing about. And it's just so wild because it's like, it's, it's like my stream. It's like my stream. If you were to boil it down and, and have it come out of like your mouth in, in the form of a song in a video, it's like, it's, it really feels like, like the, those worlds sort of like colliding. And I just never, I think part of it's like, I just wouldn't, I just never expected to hear anyone like write songs about, um, uh, exploiting the global South. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, and have that's it be wild. like a, a, like a pop, a pop song. Right. Not, and and a, not in a, yeah. deme a demeaning way. Right. Um, right. Um, that's a good observation. Um, I, I guess there's I no question in there. I'm sorry. I have to uh, thank yeah. my friend Buddy Head for, Buddy for putting Head. us together, and yeah, thank you, Buddy he's Head. The, he he's he's the one that made all everything possible uh, for me because you know I shared a post uh, you know of a song I did uh, you know last year, and I just happened to like tag him in. I didn't think he was gonna even see it, you know. Yeah. But and he messaged me right away and said he loved it, and then we've kind of been friends ever since. And he's been in like. I would have never been on Twitch or or, or known uh, about all these cool is this cool community that's developing, and it's okay. uh, so I, yeah, I have him to thank and uh, and all that. So, um, big shout out to Buddy Head. Thank you, Buddy Head, and yeah. uh, and friend Ali Problemas in chat. Hey, Problemas, what's yeah, good? Ali. Um, okay, so you're on Buddy Head's record label. Is that right? I am. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like the highlight of my life right now. Amazing. It's, Tell you us, know, a, tell us about that. Yeah, to, just releasing music uh, with with him, and um, you know, it, it just it it it's invigorating. It's exciting to give these songs like a proper release. Like normally, I just like just share it on Instagram or YouTube, just and uh, without any ceremony or anything. But um, and 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 then also we're getting other people involved, like uh, you know, artists come forward saying they want to contribute you know, art for the cover of, of every, we're doing a single yeah. every two weeks. So we've been pretty consistent with that. And, um, it's, it's, it's lit a fire in me to keep going. Cause I feel like I've gotten some good feedback and people are saying, yeah, let's keep going with this. So that's been really encouraging. So I'm just at the point where I'm just trying to write as much as I can and make a, make a bunch of songs and videos and then, um, you know, see where that, see where that goes. But it's been really, it's been really fun, and um, yeah, great, 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 great. Sorry, I don't, I don't really know how to end uh, my you're, statements. You're sometimes. doing fine. I thought that was perfect. <laughs> um, okay, Rathbone, uh, uh, you've been cranking out. It just feels like you crank out a ton of fucking music. You just sit in that room all day and just crank it out. What's the deal? Sitting in a room, a cold, yeah. dark room by Oof. myself, and just crying, feeling sad. Oh, and uh, honey. no, I mean, I'm I'm making light of it. It seems <laughs> Just call well, me honey, honey. Yeah, sweetheart. Oh, honey, well, you, <laughs> honey, uh huh, honey. You're allowed to be vulnerable. This is a vulnerable space. Um, like I said, I cry all the time. Um, Rat, well, Rathbone, if I were to like imagine your your creation process, and I'd like to ask you about this while we still got a little time here, um, I, sure. it seems like you you just like literally, I don't know, you probably got like Wikipedia up or something like that because it's just like so, some of the songs are like chock full with like historical yeah. shit that like again I I didn't know until I spent my days just on Wikipedia yeah. and like looking up documentary videos, and that's just you know the kind of the content that I make here. But, absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, you're everybody's doing their own research. Like you're doing research. I'm doing research. I, we're all learning in real time, you know, and growing and all this. And so um, I'm trying to get it right as best as I can. But uh, yeah, I'm on YouTube constantly uh, looking up, you know, videos, uh, 
I, I the, Noam Chomsky, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention All right. his work and his writings that have been deeply influence, influential on me. Cool. And uh, he's kind of the access point for me to all this other stuff. So now through Makes sense. through yeah. learning about him, uh, you know, I've I've started to take in Richard Wolf and yeah. uh, Giannis Varoufakis. Oh. Um, oh, Chris Hedges, I really Chris like. Chris Hedges. I want to. I just found him in the last week. Yeah, he he two. he offered. In fact, um, the whole U, the Ukraine Russia thing. I thought his take was really good on he he um you know came out and did an interview and then um there's another guy uh on democracy now earlier that was uh earlier this week talking about russia and ukraine Tariq ali and i forgot what he he's affiliated with like something like real left news or something in england but he was like i was like wow i need to learn more from him because his answers were like really great and, and illuminating um but yeah, I'm just trying to learn, and and like it goes back to that thing of I, I want, I don't want there to be any, I don't know, fat on the bone. I don't know what, what how I'm, that's a stupid cliche thing, but I want there to be, I want there to be real facts. I want there to be like, um, you know, real lyrics. I want it to, um, you know, so. I don't know. I, I I listened to Noam Chomsky for a long time, and uh, I yeah. felt like everything that he was saying was just like completely codified and compressed and like powerful. The way that he was able to just articulate all these things, all this madness going on in the world in such a synopsized way that um, I haven't found anybody else to really. Yeah, that was him. Um, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'll go back. Yeah, you, you. In fact, if you want to watch that, we could watch that. Uh, but he, he cool. his answer, especially in this, yeah, new left review. It's twenty minutes. Oh well, then maybe not. Yeah, no, I mean, I got all day. <laughs> um, I mean, it's up to you. But uh, he, you could listen to like maybe a minute of it. I don't. All right, all right. Know. Let me go like to the top. You know, they they usually give you the goods at the top. You know what I mean? And then the rest yeah. is just blah yeah, blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I turned the... I thought, I thought she asked him a question. Uh, and then... Okay, we'll just... We'll go to the top. Oh. You can hear that, yeah? This is Democracy Now!, yeah. democracynow.org, the War fives? and Peace Report. I'm Amy yes. Goodman. As we continue <laughs> with part two of our discussion with Tarek Ali, the British historian, oh, activist, two. filmmaker, and author. In part one, we talked about Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the expansion of NATO. We now turn to look at how all that relates I'm, to— Oh, uh, fucking Rathbone, I'm fucking Ukraine-brained right now. Yeah, I get you. I get I'm, you. No, no I was just I, saying I, I don't that, mean like, to, uh, I, No, I, I don't mean to complain. I'm just I'm just illustrating. like I I'm I got Ukraine in the membrane, man. I've been like doing this all fucking week. Uh let, no, I I didn't yeah. mean to complain, but uh, let's I'm check like this out. Yeah. We can talk about music. No, no, I I do want to check yeah. this out. I again, I wasn't <laughs> complaining. I was just I was just saying, "Boof, thank you for the support for the 1312 biddies." <laughs> A cab, yeah. am I right? Fuck the police. Anyway, Venezuela. Welcome in, Booth. That's Fuck right. Them. Venezuela's just. Just, just you, hey, Rathbone. I usually stick uh, end this at about an hour. Out yeah, of respect, no, no, no. Out of respect, do, out of respect for my guests. You're welcome to hang out with me as long as you want. I'm vibing. If you're vibing, I'm vibing. Right. All right. So just I'm let me know when you vibes. want to dip out. Okay. All right, let's released check this out. two jailed U.S. citizens following a rare visit to Caracas by a delegation from Washington, D.C. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro met with American officials over the weekend in meetings he said were respectful, cordial, very diplomatic. The U.S. delegation reportedly includes key figures like Juan González, the National Security Council's senior director for Western Hemisphere Affairs, and Jimmy Story, the U.S. ambassador to Venezuela. Part of the visit was to discuss the possible easing of U.S. sanctions on Venezuela's oil, they want their oil industry. <laughs> the New York Times also— They're coming, they're coming crawling back to, to Venezuela's oil. Is that it? Is that the, is that the long short of it? Right, let's, Usually. All right, let's get into reports this. Reports that shortly before Russia invaded Ukraine, 
Russia's deputy prime minister traveled to Caracas to meet with Maduro officials, and Maduro has had two oh phone gosh. calls with Russian President Vladimir Putin in the last month. This is Ven yeah. Here's Amy with the State Department, Rita. You, sometimes you can't trust Amy when she talks about international stuff. Venezuelan President Maduro speaking okay. on Tuesday. She, do, she does a lot of China bad. As I said to the U.S. delegation, I reiterate all our will so that from diplomacy, from respect, and from the hope of a better world, we can advance in an agenda that allows well-being and peace. There are issues of interest that we've agreed to work on to move forward on an agenda. I find it very important to be able to have face-to-face -face discussions on topics of maximum interest to Venezuela and the world. That's Venezuela. Mustaches are so hot right now. And President Nicolas Maduro. <laughs> Uh, Tarek Ali, what you're, you're pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. It's coming in. Rapid fire <laughs> yeah, changes are taking place as a well, result. Well, what did I just say? Of the um, <laughs> Russian invasion of, uh, of Ukraine. Oh, so yeah, you exactly. have now <laughs> the U.S. We need to see. We need to see a rat bone stash. Let's go, man. Wanting to thaw give us all relations rat with Venezuela, maybe dealing with uh, taking away sanctions because they want to replace Russia's oil with. Venezuela's oil. Can yeah. you talk about these developments and the release of the prisoners? Well, I think it's uh, of extreme interest, obviously, uh, Amy, and Left uh, it shows how the, the capacity of a war whose end is unpredictable uh, can have on other you know, players in different fields. I mean, the United States has been absolutely vicious against first Chavez and then even more so against uh, Nicolas Maduro. And uh, He's like a the teddy reasons bear. Who would be are pure peak, the fact they can't control the regime, they have backed coups to try and topple the regime, uh, they've tried to buy over leading Venezuelan generals with cash, all that failed. And when that failed, they actually found a new way of trying to influence the country, which is by setting up a virtual government with a virtual president, who was Juan Guaido. A total U.S. puppet oh, yeah. who was recognized as the legal president of Venezuela by the United States, welcomed by European leaders, when everyone, including the bulk of the Venezuelan opposition, knew he was a total joker. That has all failed. We live in a society. And the Russian <laughs> war on Ukraine has now concentrated mines in Washington again. They can't cut themselves off from other oil-producing countries. So Venezuela and Saudi Arabia are the key countries uh, that they're trying to uh, negotiate with. The other thing, obviously, the United States and everyone else noticed, was that oh, at the much-vaunted... <laughs> UN General Assembly resolution, uh, where you know the press reported in the Western media a huge majority to condemn Putin. Well, it a it wasn't huge. B, a number of key countries on other continents. I mean, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh up. in Asia alone, and others. Um, many small countries in Africa and in South America. Both Cuba and Venezuela abstained on the resolution. They didn't vote for Putin, but to show their disapproval of this style of politics globally, they abstained. And I think that must have both surprised and pleased some elements in Washington who are for a saner policy. And what we are witnessing now this is an attempt to repair breaches, not for any big moral or political reasons, but they need the oil. You cut off Russia's oil, you have to get filled the coffers somehow. And Venezuela is the largest, one of the largest producers of oil, the largest in the Americas, and uh -huh. that oil is necessary. So I think the release of prisoners is a cover. I mean, that could have been negotiated at any time. It's to show uh, good. Uh, which prisoners who got released? I have to say, this isn't the initial clip that i was this talking the one. about but Oops. uh this I don't, is part I know two maybe you about, saw part one yeah sorry you you know less about i know less about the the venezuela uh what's happening in venezuela but it sounds like the you know that because of what's happening with russia that 
now the U.S. is turning to Venezuela for oil. Uh, yeah. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much after, um, uh, uh, you know, cooing coo- 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 and pushing Venezuela around and having their own puppet government in, in Venezuela. Yeah, that was... I felt sanctions. like he was talking about that in the first clip, too, where okay. uh, basically they just, on paper, they set up this government. Like, they couldn't... Is that what you were saying? They couldn't oust the the actual leader. So when that failed, they just said, well, this is a virtu- This is our... We're just installing this puppet thing. But nobody actually believed that... I'm actually that not was, too close to those details. That could honestly be, okay. right? I, I, need I, to, I need to dig into this one personally. Think, yeah. Uh, yeah. This but is no, one the- uh, he... Yeah, he he in particular. I just feel I like the way that he gave the. He's. I mean, I wish I could be that stern, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's just pissed. Been talking waxing political. Waxing um, po- politic. Love it. Waxing politic. <laughs> um. Uh, okay. Let, let me let me just keep digging in because I, I I'm, I'm getting some I'm getting some out of this. Will the real discussions taking place? And in, in, in chat, let me know like. If there's a TLDR, you can help us help me understand what happened there. Uh, but it's it seems like the same fucking thing they did in in, in Ukraine. They 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 forced through uh, uh, a coup. Uh, Washington um, orchestrated a coup in Ukraine in 2014 and forced through their picks to be the the new president and PM, I believe, in uh, in Ukraine. And even they they went through the. Um, the fucking impeachment process of the existing president, uh, and they didn't have the votes, but they they acted like they did. And America comes in, and they're like, "Oh, look, look at this! We recognize this brand new government, even though it wasn't democratic." Uh, which is funny because we go all over the world imparting our democracy, right, via uh, via oh, drones, yeah. which is a really weird weird way to do it. Um, and of course, we they don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in democracy here. What would make us think they believe in giving other people democracy? Get the fuck out of here. Anyways, absolutely, that's yeah. great. Um, Thank you. I said something good. I didn't. What? Oh, dude. Yeah. The, the, wasn't that the Maidan uprising? Was that what that was? Twenty fourteen. Um, yeah. It yeah. was pretty much like J six on steroids, and and uh, they they effectively chased the fucking president out of town. They almost lynched the dude in the street if they got a hold of him, like they did Gaddafi. So is Zelensky um, an American puppet? I mean, he's, yeah. Is that what you could? Yeah. Pretty much. You could say that. That's not inaccurate. Yeah. Um, like installed um well he, he he wasn't the one that was that was installed but um right. you know he's he's still an american puppet he's um part he, of that yeah 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 i think i think it's fair it's fair to call him a puppet of the west and maybe even more specifically the u.s hey rad left dead oh shit Crossing the Rubicon Rad. in the Jeep Rubicon alea ecta est the die is cast thank you for being one of us wait where's my fucking reverb one of us. <laughs> this guy have a lot of wow. reverb. All right, and these are all I like don't know things what just that happened, but these are all like things that like I'm uncovering, like as I go, Rathbone. I'm like learning in real time. My my chat is watching me sort of do that thing we were talking about, which is like deprogram ourselves from imperial core programming and propaganda, and we're trying to like pierce through the imperial veil and find out what the fuck is actually going on in the world, and it's hard. Because all we know is fucking CBS, Fox News, MSNBC, blah, 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 blah. And this is why musicians like you and streamers like me are doing good things in the world. Because it's like the world is thirsty for this kind of content because we've never been given it. Agreed. It's all been marginalized. Yeah. I'm a billionaire. I'm oh, a fuck. We got a five bomb. A five. Someone's gifting five subbies to the channel. That literally means they five. gave me like they gave 25 bucks. That is very nice. That is very nice. Do you know that Twitch exploits me for fifty percent for every subscription? What do you think about that, Go? That's so fucked. Not surprising though. Isn't Twitch owned yeah. by Amazon? It's owned by Amazon. And Amazon is owned by BlackRock. Is that true? Well, I think BlackRock is the largest shareholder of Amazon and oh. like a bunch of different companies. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I learned that from Tony Nagi. I don't Tony know. Tony Nagi? Yeah. Actually, that would be a funny video to watch right. where she explains. Uh, I, I, but she, I think she's on Instagram. I'm not trying to change the subject. It's fine. Also, I'm o- I'm over time, so I, you know you you probably like I'm cut the mic, this. Brian. No, cut the mic. This. 
I don't want you to go, but I understand if you need okay. to, and if you'd like to, and if you got other no, things no, no. to do, of course, of course. Um, yeah, I'll see. If I can did find you it. want to? Hey, Ambigibot's in the house. Everyone, give Ambigibot a follow. Um, did you want to watch what, the rest uh, of this? Is this is this is this hitting for you? Is this is this slapping? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We could, let's keep going. Okay, Tariq Ali. Um, I'm surprised. I like. I, I literally play Democracy Now every morning, which I, I just yeah. I don't love it because. What else am I going to play? Like a daily news show that like gives me yeah. a tidy 10, 15 I, minute, but, but they keep fucking it up and they keep throwing in all the goddamn imperialisms. Uh, uh, and and I, really? I don't know if they See, know I'm learning here. I didn't, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off, but you, I didn't know that. To. Like, uh, I, I watch democracy now, um, every, every morning too. just do mm -hmm. the headlines. But mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you do the same thing, but like what, uh, so what's your take on this? Because it doesn't seem like there's another channel that I can just go to on a daily basis where that's, that's the I thing. Mean, there's nothing like, yeah, it's maybe among the best, but at the end of the day, you got to trust yourself. And, uh, I think they do a bad job on international stuff, especially when it has anything to do with, uh, um, you like the, the, the spear of the U S Imperial. It, it, it feels like they just, they, they walk the path and they do a better job, uh, domestic stuff. Um, but okay. I just think they're not uh, reliable. Um, uh, with that said, um, I don't know. Like you just gotta. It depends on the subject. Be media literate. Yeah. Um, I'm re actually I'm really liking. Um, okay, actually, yeah, let, let me frame it this way. Uh, I've been trying to educate myself on like what's happening in Ukraine, and that's why I do want to get back to this. But uh, one thing that I'm, I've, I've taken to doing is uh, uh, coming up with a with like a notebook. I'm trying to come up with a list of fucking, here's my questions for you. Uh, a list of, is it here? Geopolitical? Yo, of like, if I were to like tell someone, hey, if you want to quote unquote get on my level and understand my understanding of what's happening in Ukraine, here are the videos that you should watch and I'm going to put them in order and I just haven't done this yet and I need to tweet out a thread of these. But like, that's amazing. Hey, that's a great Dead, idea. Thank you with another five bomb. Rad left dead. Thank you. You're very oh, nice to me. Yeah. I don't know who you are. Thank you. You just joined in today. Rad Dad is the shit. Fucking Rad Left Dad. Um, what was I trying to get at here? I was going to say a thing. But uh, uh, No, I, I like the idea of you doing a playlist of like all the go-tos, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's cool. Hold on. I lost you there. I don't know where I was going with that, to be honest. Uh, I think I had a thought train, and then I fell off the tracks. But uh, It the, happens. But I, yes. I like that idea. I'm going to do that. And I'll, I'll definitely share it I, out. I there. would fucking watch it. Yeah. You should, uh, you know, curate like a, I don't know how, if you could do it on a daily basis, but that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to pop a thread out there. I got like, I got like, like seven to 10 videos. Yeah. Like I'm learning from you right now because okay. uh, your, your take on democracy now. So yeah, I'm happy to know that like, you know. Circling back to that. Uh, Thank you. That's what we were talking about. The um, domestic. There's just, a, yeah. So, okay, let me let me put it like this. Um, one of the more revealing moments for me on my stream was when I was looking into, uh, uh, okay, Xinjiang, China. You've been hearing about maybe okay. the Uyghurs. Maybe you even yeah. even heard about like yeah. alleged genocide or ethnic cleansing right. or things like that. Okay. Democ I, I would find out that like democracy now I made like a three hour, a couple uh, videos there up on my YouTube. I would find out that they'd, they'd be like, they they seem to uh, 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 just toe the CIA line on what's happening allegedly in, in Xinjiang, China. Okay. Um, and it's really fucked up. The, the, the more you dig into it, like one of the main sources of information that's coming out of Xinjiang alleging these awful, terrible things is this guy whose name is Adrian Zenz. And he's got very tie, uh, close ties to State Department uh, uh, a propaganda uh, organization called the Victims of Communism Foundation. They got like a website that tells you about the, ooh, the, the specter of communism yeah. in Europe, yeah, right? Yeah. So you can see where this is going. One of their guests was someone who was affiliated with the Hoover 
uh, the Hudson Institute. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck's the Hudson Institute? And of course, I find myself on Wikipedia going down the right. rabbit hole. It's the fucking worst neocon motherfuckers you can imagine. So we're talking like spear of U.S. imperialism, the thing that does the U.S. imperialism all over the place and fucks, uh, fucks everyone up. You know what I mean? And it just enriches yeah. the, 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 the already wealthy here in the United States uh, or, or our international wealthy friends as well. It doesn't empower it the working a, class. Sorry. It's called the Hudson Institute. So that was like, that was just like one think tank. It's just like an example of one of the think tanks. Think tank, yeah. So like they had a guest on and they, and they were like, I was just speaking at the Hudson Institute. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why do you fuckers right. have them on democracy now? Like how, how is that not a moment for one of the producers to be like, all right, shut it down here. And they would, and the guest yeah. would just go on to hawk just, just, I don't know, would, would be I think hawk. blatant fucking lies. On, on their program, yeah. so they would they would so, do they, they they would and this guest would would be on and they're like there are two million Uyghurs in camps and then like there was actually a video of them from like a a, a year later and they're like there's one million Uyghurs in camps so I'm like wait was it just two or one how much do you really care about the Uyghurs if you could just invent a fucking million of them and then million. uninvent them. <laughs> And then uninvent them in the blink of an eye. Right. And how about uninvent the how them, about yeah. the rest of that million? Are you inventing them too? And it would become yeah. it would become clear to me. And, and I could. There's always more to learn. All right. It would become too clear to so, me that so like you, most of the information coming out about about this was fucking lies, and people were buying yeah. into this narrative of a genocide in fucking Xinjiang. And actually, they would say things like there's forced labor, and when they would say that, they didn't even realize that they're actually hurting them because. When there's allegations of forced labor, like other Chinese don't want to work with them because they don't want to have extra, you know, eyes into their business. So they're actually hurting the Uyghurs uh, by doing the thing that they, by caring, by caring yeah. too fucking much, they're actually hurting the people that they care about. I'm so sorry. So that, that, that was a yeah, moment that so, like woke me up that day. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, yeah. So, so your take on it is that obviously democracy now is being too sympathetic to this propaganda being released about the Uyghur genocide when actually it's not really a genocide. How do we, how do we know that it's not a genocide or, uh, cause I, I don't know anything about it. Honestly, I, I know that, uh, there's a lot of flack coming up, about like how people are trumping it up, you know, like it's this big thing, but it's not, it's not really happening. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can go down this rabbit hole and I'm happy to like tell you what I yeah. know and like what we've seen. Okay. Number I can also one, do my own research. No, and I'm happy to help. Number one, we okay. don't we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't really know what's yeah. going on there. Really a lot know. of the reason is that because my understanding is that, and uh, chat, and, or, or you, or anyone can help me improve my understanding. That's all, all that this is about. I hope I'm not spreading misinformation sure. here. My understanding sure. is that there was a spate of fucking uh, uh, terrorist attacks uh, being done by uh, Salafi uh, Muslims that was being exported into the fucking area via uh, 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 Saudi Arabia. And of course, we fund Saudi Arabia. So in effect, yeah. we were influencing these things and we were, uh, 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 you know, uh, funding Saudi Arabia. They were exporting Salafi uh, 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 okay. fucking, uh, uh, Islam, excuse me. And that's it's very fucking dangerous. Uh, and there was like stabbings in all sorts of different provinces, mass stabbings in all sorts of different provinces in China. And there was this outbreak mm -hmm. of fucking extremist uh, terrorism. Uh, and my understanding is that they were they were like uh, participating in instead of like dropping bombs on them, like like the United States does, just literally dropping bombs on them. They were like mm -hmm. putting them into these like, uh, uh, I don't know what's the best word to describe it, like like camps so they can like help de-radicalize these fucking people you know mm -hmm. and treating them like human beings instead of like dropping a fucking bomb on them like we respond to any form of like uh, uh oh, yeah. you know ideology that, that that doesn't you know bow its fucking head to u.s imperialism so that's one of the reasons why it's been so hard to get information out of there the place has been shut down xinjiang has like sort of been there, there was like a crackdown you know what I mean? That's my, this is my basic understanding. I would like to learn more about it. And Biggie Bot, yeah, there was like a crackdown. Now, that's mm. being spun as, oh, they're banning the Uyghur language. That's not true. There's actually, like, that's not true at all. There's, mm. there's like, claims like they're, like, uh, they're doing uh, uh, sterilizations. And I just, there's no, there just does, there doesn't seem to be no, evidence for the claims that they're making. And, of course, this is getting exported and being used by all 
the worst types of people that would use this kind of disinformation. We, I, I think it's fair to call it disinformation. It's mis, misinformation's evil fucking cousin. Like it's being used yeah. maliciously and it's yeah. being used by all the types that you would think that, to use it to say China bad. Let's uh, yeah. engage in a new yeah. Cold War yeah. with China. Uh, uh, war, yeah. war machine got to go burr. We, uh, you know, Raytheon's stocks got to go up. We got to sell the missiles. We got to make more missiles. Missiles, 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 missiles. All right. So I don't know. That's my. I, like, I, I haven't. I wish I had more time to look in, into this specific thing. There was a point at which yeah. I was like, "This is entirely oh, fucked, fine. y'all." Uh, yeah. I'm out. Like, I, I, I feel like I have a decent understanding that the, you know, what's happening here. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and of course, I just there's a whole world of shit that I want to look into. So. Sure. Thank you for explaining it, though. And I'm, I'd be I happy to be wrong. If you come to a new, new understanding, please educate me. Yeah. 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 Um, well, no, it comports with my sense of reality about America just being the great terror of the world. So I can understand that. But um, and it's yeah, not to say that great. like bad things aren't happening to you know uh, 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 Uyghur Muslims. Uh, you know, uh, right? Any minority, there's going to be mistreatment, and of course, that's why we need global communism. <laughs> uh, yeah. How did I get there? Behind that. <laughs> Sidestep. Uh, Rathbone, you still yeah. got you still got a couple of minutes with me here. Did you, did you want to? Tell, maybe you could give us a sneak peek, maybe or or tell us about an upcoming song that hasn't been released. Can we get the goods? How can I get the goods out of you here? Oh, that's good. Can you um, tell us about any I, upcoming songs. I do have yeah, I've got a lot of new songs coming out soon. Uh, cool. I'm still working. I work try to finish a video uh one one new video a week um but uh yeah i'm just been writing a bunch let's see i'm probably not going to give a good answer right now but i do have uh let's see like maybe five new songs i'm, I'm working on right now and uh I, I think for the time being i'm just sort of releasing uh buddy head singles for for the foreseeable future. And, um, but I got a song called Heads Will Roll. Okay. That's going to be good because uh, we're going to talk about killing the <coughs> ruling elite. In, in so the video gotta, game. In our favorite video and, game because Twitch is, you know, we got to be careful what we say here in, of in course. Minecraft. Duh. Yeah. Duh. Um, we're fine. <laughs> I think we're fine. We're fine, right, Chet? <laughs> Whoops. We're fine. No, this I'm is. Not. I'm talking about a song. You know. Of course. Oh, in a, a song. In the song. In a song. Oh, in the song. In yeah, the song. Yeah. In the game. In the yeah, in the Minecraft. In the. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Very good. Um, and then you know just other songs about billionaires and bullshit. And stuff. I don't know. Hey guys. I uh, that's cool. pretty much that's the best answer I got. <laughs> Not really too much inside. I, I mean, I just basically just make videos and yeah, release them. Um, but I started a Twitch channel. I did start uh, okay. live streaming while I'm making songs and music and uh, videos. I started uh, live streaming that. That's um, really cool. Yeah. I heard you wrote a song but, with chat one day. Like what? Is that true? I did. I don't know. I must have made that uh, up. I, I must have made that I up. I do. I do. Uh, like people comment, and and then I'll. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of like engaging with people, okay. and as I'm writing, so yeah. Uh, uh yeah. You got your daw there. It's just me and Ableton. Ableton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that I was working on a video. It's more of like a edu. Oh, by the way, it's like an edutainment song, which I saw as something that you uh, you use as a label for your channel, edutainment. Exactly. Which I, I find I do I do the same kind. of It's thing. literally the same vibe. Um, uh, you just do it in music form, and I do live stream form. Exactly. Uh, and yours is exactly uh, better. Yeah. No. T no. Tidier. No. 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 It's much shorter at the very least. Shorter. <laughs> But anyway, you know, yeah. sometimes I'm, uh, I just do a bunch of musical stuff. We don't have to, it's probably really, really boring, but, Oops. uh, I, it's whoops. just something new that I started. I uh, oh, that's a bad transition. I'm having a hard time with OBS today. What the fuck, dude? Um, fucking OBS. <laughs> uh, you use OBS, OBS. too? No, I uh, oh. just, I'm, I'm a beginner. I use Twitch studio. Keep I simple. did have OBS 
Yeah, but I I don't know. I found it too stressful for me. So it can, it can, I'm having graduated. I think it's smart. It's smart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Start it, it, could, it could be a lot for sure. Annoying. It's just like, oh my gosh. Uh, but I don't yeah. know. I use it every fucking day. It's like, uh, it's like you know, it's just like a, my daily driver. It's just like driving a car, you know? It's like riding a bike. I don't yeah, know absolutely. what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Like, so once again... Yeah. I, 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 get, I think this is just a great time. I, I guess we'll wrap it up. This has been, just been a lot of fun. Yeah. I've really enjoyed yeah. chatting with you. I think we just got to do this again. Please, please, please keep me in mind anytime you want to talk about anything. If you want to hang out with me, you can just pop in while I'm learning about something. I don't care, dude. You're just cool and chill, and I dude, like the vibe that we awesome. got here. Um, so, folks, if you joined in uh, in the middle of our chat, I'm chatting with Rathbone right now. Rathbone is an anarchist musician. You can find them on the twitch.tv.com.edu.gov.xxx, twitch.tv slash wrath81. Instead of Rathbone, one, I guess that was yeah. taken on. Uh, you can't win them all. Yeah, also. Yeah. Also on um, on the uh, the Twitters, you can find Rathbone on the Twitters at underscore Rathbone. There's the link in the chat. You also can be found on Instagrams. All the Instagrams. And you probably release our, all your music there. Uh, uh, when, I do, when it goes yeah. Live. Okay, yeah. cool. I'll give yeah. you that link as well. Okay, Rathbone, what else do did Dude. we want people to know about you? I think that's it. I think okay. uh, I think we th that was fun, man. Thank you for having me on the show. And uh, so good. Yeah, I had a good time. I had a great time, and I'm really happy that uh, uh, that you did as well. Um, all right, we'll see you next time. We'll we'll see you next time, and I hope that's like sooner than later because uh, this is just super chill and good. Um, yo, you take care. Absolutely. All right? Peace. Thanks so much for you being too, with man. me. All right. All right. Bye bye. Love your face. Yeah. Yes. I don't think I don't think they heard me say that part. Love your face. All right, that was Rathbone. How do we get out of this scene? This. That was like so fun. All right. <laughs>